Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about snapshots in the TrueNAS system. So what is a snapshot and why do you want TrueNAS to be taking one? Well, a snapshot is a copy of your data at a very, very specific moment in time, essentially the time that the task runs in uh, TrueNAS. What do we mean by that? Well, if you picture like a video game where you take a save point and if you go ahead in the video game and something happens, you can always load that save point again. You can go back to the game as it was at the time that you took the save. So that's very much what a snapshot is like in the TrueNAS system. If I have a set of data in the system and I take a snapshot of it, maybe on a Tuesday, and then uh, later on, on a Wednesday, I do something to that data that means that uh, that I didn't intend to do or didn't want to, to do, such as delete it or uh, screw it up or make it in some way unusable, then I could always restore my uh, data set back to the snapshot to how it was when I took that save of the data. So it's very tempting to refer to these as like backups of the, the, the data. Uh, I'm just gonna be super clear, these are not backups of your, your data. Uh, you have to picture this very much like a save point in a video game and imagine uh, if that save point, if your video game itself broke or if you lost the save, then you it's, it's not really a backup so it doesn't, uh, doesn't really help. Um, you should back up your data, you, sh you should definitely do that. A snapshot is very important, it's a very useful uh, way to roll back to a known good version of your data, but it's not a backup. And uh, we'll talk about backups in a another video. So, how do I set up a snapshot of my data? Well, first of all, we're going to log into our TrueNAS system. And then on the left-hand side, we'll see the option for tasks. And then we've got the option for periodic snapshot tasks about halfway down. So we can see we've got a couple of periodic snapshot ta tasks already set up for my um, my TrueNAS system. But we're going to set up another periodic snapshot task. Can I say that 10 times fast? Um, so we're going to hit the add button here on the right hand side like we always do. And then we're going to get prompted with a couple of different options. So the first option that we get asked for is what data set that we want to, to save uh, or to take the snapshot off. So unlike a lot of our other tasks like the scrub task that's run on the entire pool, the snapshot task is run on a specific data set. So you can choose to run it at a very high level um, and choose the entire media pool, for example, or you can go very, very granular and uh, get right into a very specific data set that you want to take the snapshot off. So in this example, I'm just going to do it for the media pool and I'm not going to um, drill down uh, any further. I want a, a snapshot to be taken off the entire pool so that if any of the data is lost, I can roll back the whole thing. So the next option that we get here is recursive. Um, and we want this to be set to yes, because we don't want to just take a snapshot of the very the top level domain or a very specific set of, uh, of data sets. We want the entire sub and child data sets to be taken a snapshot off as well. That means that we can roll back a lot of different data sets if there's any sort of problem. But maybe there's a use case where you don't want all of the child data sets to be kept as well. And you'd be able to uncheck um, recursive and just take that very specific um, snapshot task. You've also got the option to exclude some specific data sets. So maybe there's a specific child data set that changes very often or you don't care about, you don't want to uh, save, and you could exclude it uh, here, um, for example. So then we've got an option for snapshot, snapshot lifetime. Whew, snapshot. So the default here is two weeks, and I'm probably going to leave it like that because two weeks is pretty good as a default. But what does this snapshot lifetime mean? Well. If I take a snapshot of my data, imagine I have a data set and it is 100 gigabytes of data. And I've taken a snapshot of that on a Tuesday. And then on a Wednesday, I come along and say, you know what, I actually don't need this data. I want to delete it. I'm very certain I want to delete it. I hit the delete key and I get rid of that 100 gigabytes of data. TrueNAS will keep that snapshot for two weeks. So I can restore and go back to that save point, that snapshot of data, um, for the next two weeks before TrueNAS truly removes it, empties the recycle bin, so to speak, um, and completely gets rid of it. So the upside of that is I have a way to go back if I suddenly decide I didn't want to delete that 100 gigabytes of data. The downside is even though that 100 gigabytes looks like it's disappeared to me, the user, uh, it ha it's still taking up storage space in the TrueNAS system because uh, this kind of snapshot task, the storing the data, it's not free. 
um, that 100 gigabytes will still be taken up in my storage until the snapshot expires, until we, we permanently empty the trash and we, we don't need uh, the snapshot anymore. So that's my, maybe why you don't want to store the snapshot for an entire lifetime or even for a very, very long period of time. I find that two weeks is more than enough most of the time. Um, I very rarely wait two weeks before I realize I shouldn't have deleted something, but it can happen. So whatever you're more comfortable with uh, here, some people go for four weeks, six weeks, um, and so on. And some people take very, very regular snapshots and they get rid of them um, after a day or two. Uh, whatever your mileage may vary, whatever makes sense for your system. So then we've got the naming schema. So by default, the, the automatic name that a snapshot is given it uses the year, month, date, hour, and minute that the snapshot is taken at. And that's perfect. Uh, it makes it a very easy way to, for us to navigate and understand when the snapshot is taken. But maybe you wanted a task where a very specific name is given to a snapshot so that you can differentiate between them. I'm not gonna do that here, but that is possible as well. Um, and then we're going to take a look at how often we want to run the snapshot task. Well, say for example, I do a lot of deleting or updating of the snapshot data uh, or the media um, data set. So I can go ahead and I can either run that daily or I can turn around and say, well, actually I do a lot of uh, deleting every uh, morning, evening, night, and sometimes I want to roll back to a version that was an hour ago instead of two hours ago or three hours ago, where I might uh, get a lot of data or even last week. Um, personally, I don't make a lot of changes, so I only take periodic snapshots once a week because that makes sense for me and my system. But maybe you've got a very busy system and you want to make sure that you've got plenty of those uh, snapshots to roll back to. So in this example, we're just going to hit the, the hourly option at the start of each hour. You get the options here to uh, set a beginning and end time. Uh, this helps with a little bit of granularity in case you uh, you know want to specify some time that um, maybe people are heavily using the system every Tuesday morning uh, and you don't want it to run, you know, in the mornings or something like that. Um, we've specified to run it every hour, so we want it to run throughout the whole system. But the beginning and end times here are something that would help you modify that. Then we've got the option to allow taking empty snapshots. And uh, we're going to leave this checked, but the option here is it makes sure that it takes a snapshot even if nothing has changed. And I like doing that because it means that I'll always have a snapshot I can roll back to even if I haven't been actively using the, the data set for, for quite some time. So maybe I don't touch the data set for several months and then uh, tomorrow I go ahead and uh, delete something and I, I want it to have been taking a fairly recent snapshot um, even if I haven't actively been using it so I don't find that my latest snapshot is six months ago or something like that. Then you've got the option to enable or disable the task. I don't know why you would have a task that you didn't have enabled. Um, there are definitely use cases where that would be the, the case, but we're, we're creating a new one, so uh, that's fine. And then we're just going to hit the submit button here. So we can see that we've now got two snapshot tasks for the media pool. Um, I had one uh, previously that was running uh, every Tuesday, uh, basically where it would take the, the snapshot. And we've got another one running now and it's going to um, run on an hourly basis. Now, if we just hit the expand pool on the right hand side, we can see that there's a little bit of extra data here about how long the snapshots are kept for. Um, but we can't actually tell the difference between either of these snapshots. We can't tell which one is the hourly one, which one is the, the weekly one. We have to go back into the edit pool and we can see the top one is the hourly one. And if I hit cancel there and go back, we can see the uh, other one, the the um, the second one in, in line is the weekly one. So um, unfortunately, TrueNAS doesn't really give you the option to add a comment or a description to the periodic snapshot tasks, but it does give you the option to do it for things like the scrub tasks, which never really made sense for me. But What's really helpful here is if you really define your snapshot tasks and take very high level ones or ones that are quite obvious uh, to you, but it's it's not such a big deal for you to go in and have to edit and take a look at things. So where are your snapshots once they're taken and how do you roll back to them? Well, if we go into the storage uh, tab on the left hand side, we'll see an option for snapshots. And here you can see I've been taking snapshots for quite some time over the last couple of weeks. And if I had decided that, for example, this is something that really happened to me very recently, uh, I wanted to roll back one of my jails, the Plex jail to an earlier version. So you can see there's a couple of versions here as, way, uh, as far back as the third of the month. I was able to expand here and then I had the option to either delete the snapshot if it was taking up too much uh, storage space, 
clone it to a new data set if I wanted to take an, an exact copy. I also had the option to roll back and then you're given a couple of options here. Um, and what I did here is I rolled back to an older version. You've got a couple of options here to stop the rollback if there's snapshots that exist, like if you've got newer snapshots or newer clones or anything like that. Um, but you've also got the option to just force override it and say that you wanted to roll back to the oldest possible version of the, the snapshot, which is what I wanted to do at the time. I'm not going to demonstrate that, but if I put no safety controls here and then confirm, I'd have the option to hit roll back and then the page would load and the, the data set would uh, roll back. So that's it guys. <laughs> that's how you would take a periodic snapshot of your data and how you would hit the roll back button to go back to a previous version of your data uh, or a save point for your, your data. Uh, at this stage, I'll just ask you again if you would be so kind as to do the YouTube dance, which is to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, that really lets the YouTube al algorithm know that I'm making content that people uh, like to see and starts promoting me to other viewers just like you guys, and it really helps out the channel. Otherwise, uh, I will catch you guys on the flip side.